welcome to Tucson Church International. Thank you so much for joining us for this exciting worship celebration and gathering. To our first time guest, we're so glad you're here and we've been waiting for you. Please hit the connection link you see on the screen. We have a great gift already prepared for you and we're excited to share it with you. Each week, we love celebrating our Dream Team. Thank you, Dream Team members, for your faithfulness in serving and ministering to the people of God and to the local community. Thank you so much for your service, Dream Team members. Please allow your youth and children to join us online Saturday evening for live teaching for our Kingdom Kids and our Next Steps for Teens. Please allow your young people to learn and experience God on their own levels. Now it's time to clear every distraction and invite your family, your friends, and your loved ones to view right along with you. Prepare your hearts now to experience God in an awesome, fresh new way. Now it's time for worship. We came to celebrate our King, to bless Him and give Him praise. This song just says, God, you are greater, greater than anything that we face greater than our circumstance, greater than our situation. What's bigger than you, what's stronger than you, it don't exist, it don't exist. What's more powerful or in control, it don't exist, it don't exist. Who can rescue me, supply all my needs? They don't exist, they don't exist. Who can save my soul and make me whole? They don't exist, they don't exist. Cause you are greater than anything. Come on, I need you to raise that up right here in this place. Say it. You are than anything that we face. God, you, you are, are greater, you're greater, than God, God, you're greater than any problem you that arises. God, you're greater Come on, help us sing it. What's bigger than you, what's stronger than you, it don't exist, it don't exist. What's more powerful or more in control? They don't exist. They don't exist. Who can rescue me? Supply all my needs. They don't exist. They don't exist. Who can save my soul and make me whole? They don't exist. Cause you
for more of your spirit, more of your power, more of your anointing. We need you like we never needed you before. Pour out your spirit in this place. Pour out your spirit in this place. Overwhelm us and overtake us. Overwhelm us and overtake us and feel us. Sing it. Say, pour out pour your spirit. Out your spirit in this place. Cause that's what we desire, God, for you to pour out pour your spirit. Out your spirit in this place. And overwhelm us. And overtake us. sing it. Just say, pour out your spirit, Lord. Pour, pour out. out your spirit in this place. That's what we long for, more of your spirit, pour Lord. Pour out your spirit in this place. Overwhelm us, Lord. Overwhelm and overtake us.
special to me. He was healthy, strength, um, a gift, pushed us really hard to our destiny, and um, a mother is caring, a mother is loving, a, m a mother is fun. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day, Day to all. all. Happy Mother's Day to all of the moms. Moms are all on a journey and every path is unique to them. There are a million things for her to do, but none more important than introducing them to the beauty and wonder of God's creation. There's no one else in the world like her, and God made it that way. She's been through years of joy and heartache, and her stories are sacred, precious, and holy. She's poured out her life into her children and grandchildren. There's no one else in the world like her, and God made it that way. Most of the time, they remember what you've taught them. But then other times, they need a not so gentle reminder that boundaries are a part of love. There's no one else in the world like her, and God made it that way. Giving birth to her own children didn't play out like she thought it would. And while there have been many dark days, this day is providing more light than she knows what to do with. There's no one else in the world like her, and God made it that way. He was her firstborn son, and even though people might feel sorry for her, there's nothing she'd change about her situation or about the gift he is to her. There's no one else in the world like her, and God made it that way. Every mom is unique and beautiful, and our prayer today is that all mothers would allow God's truth to pour over you that there really is no one else in the world quite like you, and that God himself really made it that way. So be blessed and be honored. Continue to shine the love of Christ into the places where your family needs it the most. Happy Mother's Day. We invite you now to join us in the worship of giving. Tucson Church International has many ways to give. You may give online, you may text to give, you may mail your gift 
to our post office box, or if you're with us in the live worship gathering, you may raise your hand and any one of our porters will be happy to serve you with a giving envelope. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to return the tithe and to give an offering. Father, we do this in response to your great outpouring of love to us, Lord. And Father, we thank you for this great opportunity. Thank you, God, that you are true to your word and you are a keeper of your promises, that you will continue to provide seed to the sowers. We thank you for every giver and we thank you for every tither. We command blessings over every area of their lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Cause oh. 
Oh God, how we love you and honor you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We thank you for this moment. Thank you for this opportunity to love on you, to honor you, to acknowledge you, to recognize you. Let the fruit of our lips give you praise. Let our hearts express our gratitude and appreciation to you. You are so good and you deserve all the glory and all the praise. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for our online campus. Thank you for the folks that are gathering from all around. We are so, so grateful. Hallelujah. Mm. Listen, my friends, why don't you take a moment right now and just continue to worship him. We are so grateful for the Antioch Church of Long Beach. They furnish our worship um, for online campus and it's been powerful as we've enjoyed the presence of God this weekend. I want to extend it. I want to encourage you right there where you are, maybe in your cubicle, maybe you're in your home, in your car, wherever you're viewing. Take a moment right now and acknowledge God. Come on, just you and him. Take a moment right now and offer your worship. No one can praise God like you can. No one can offer thanks and worship like you can. Would you love him? Would you honor him? Would you give him the glory? Hmm. Worthy, 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 God, worthy are you. You deserve all the glory, all of the honor, all the praise, all of the adoration. It is our honor to give it to you. Go ahead, beloved. Some of you lift your hands. Some of you worship him, the lifting of your voice. We're just acknowledging God. He is so good. He is so great. And we're committed that distance will never and technology will never again keep us from being able to enter into the presence of God. There is no distance in the presence of God. We love him today. We honor him and we give him glory together. Mm, wow, what an incredible, powerful time we're having in the presence of God. Thank you, thank you. I wanna just give a quick shout out to all of our partners. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us this weekend for the gathering here at Tucson Church International. Um, if this is your first time hanging out with us, we're so honored, so privileged that you are joining us. Please do us a favor, indicate, give us your name and uh, where you're viewing from. And if there's any way that we can serve you, don't hesitate to let us know. Indicate it right there in the chat room or the comments. Would you do that? Thank you. Thank you. If you guys are checking us out, joining us Saturday night, God bless you. We're so glad that you're with us Saturday evening at six, Sunday morning. 10.30 a.m. social media platforms and um, we're on YouTube. However you are connecting, we are so grateful. We are so appreciative. Thank you for praying with us. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for helping and partnering with us to advance the gospel. So grateful for your partnership with us. Thank God for each one of you. I want to just come out the gate. This is Mother's Day weekend. Oh my God, we are celebrating mothers all weekend long, celebrating mothers every day of the year, but we're so grateful for this special weekend that we have uh, in all of our services across our platforms. We are acknowledging mothers and we're so grateful for this opportunity. I want you to do me a favor if you would very quickly, just remove any distractions that might be in your way. Um, make sure that you have something that you could take some good notes with. And, uh, and by all means, make sure you grab your Bible as we get ready to unpack scripture um, as we navigate through this Mother's Day celebration. All right, I want to just share with all of our family that we're having a phenomenal time on Tuesday nights in small group. Uh, people are still registering, still kicking in or connecting. Don't know how long that space is gonna open. We may be at that final threshold because uh, you gotta kind of get into it and be settled. Um, but we're so excited for those that are joining us for spring small groups. Um, also want to just put a plug out real quick to our online campus. We are planning for an upcoming baptism 
So please reach out to us if you'd like to be baptized, never been baptized, want more information on baptism, just send us a note. We'd love to communicate with you. You'll be uh, hearing more details and dates, um, but it's just around the corner. We're preparing uh, for a baptismal service weekend. Super excited about that. Just had a baby dedication. We just had our first uh, time guest meal two weeks ago. Great, wonderful things are happening. And we're so excited to all of our graduates and uh, parents, if you can help us. Uh, we have so many new families that are becoming a part of our TCI family. We want to acknowledge all of our graduates, all of our seniors. Uh, if you're graduating senior in high school, uh, college graduates, uh, please reach out to us during this season. Uh, we want to make sure that we can cover everybody. Just send us a note, info at TucsonChurch.org. All right, info at TucsonChurch.org. Send us your information. We'd love to acknowledge all of our graduates. Again, this is Mother's Day weekend, and we are so excited to be able to honor and, uh, and to just uh, celebrate all of our mothers. Um, we also wanna take a moment, we wanna take a moment and we wanna celebrate the life and the legacy of mothers who have transitioned, who are already in glory. We do pause today and we thank God for their life. We thank God for their investment and we really thank God for their legacy that continues to live on. We celebrate them and we honor them. All right, my friends, let's get ready to go into the word. I just want to spend a little time uh, around 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1, 2 Timothy chapter 1, and uh, starting at verse 3 through 7. And then I want to give you just a few thoughts, uh, and then we're going to wrap up with a time of prayer, trusting that you're having a wonderful weekend to all of the mothers, praying you've been celebrated, doted over, blessed, and um, with other festivities, maybe still on the way. You are a true gift uh, to the world, and we are so grateful and we're so appreciative for you. This weekend, um, to, uh, actually Mother's Day, um, if you're viewing this on Sunday or, or the Saturday night, but May the 8th, May the 8th is forever etched in my heart. It is uh, my mother's birthday, and, and if she were still alive, she would be turning 79, 79 this year and uh, miss her dearly, think of her so much and so often, and um, so grateful to know that she is now in that great cloud of witnesses, cheering us on to continue to run the race that God has set before us. And one day, we're gonna all meet again together and spend eternity with our Lord. I'm so grateful. And uh, so again, I hope that you're having wonderful time um, of celebration. And so I wanna go back and just wanted to share, hope you were blessed by the video, just celebrating moms. And I wanted to just share a word. We are in a series here in our church um, entitled Relationships. And, uh, and I'm looking forward to unpacking some more of that next week. But this is a significant piece here as mothers, this function and role that you have uh, with children and your function here in the earth. You are engaged in that mother-child relationship. And, uh, and so I wanna just speak to that for a few moments this weekend and uh, trust that it'll encourage you and bless you as you're on your journey of motherhood. But the Apostle Paul is speaking and writing to his son in the gospel, Timothy. And, uh, and he begins to speak to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter one, and uh, starting again at verse three. And he says, I thank God, I love this, whom I serve, and Paul says, as my ancestors did. Don't miss that part. I think there's something so significant. What a privilege, what an honor, what a blessing that he is able to articulate those words, that he is serving the God that his ancestors served. He says, and I do that with a clear conscience. He says, as night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. He's talking now to his beloved son, Timothy. I'm consistently praying for you, Timothy. And then he goes back and he says, recalling your tears. He said, I long to see you as a father longs to see his son. I can't wait to see you. He says that I may be filled with joy. Paul says this, he says, I am reminded. This is the key component here. I often go back to this text when I'm teaching, particularly on Mother's Day. Uh, there are definitely other 
um, scriptures and, and, and other areas that we can draw from. But I think in light of where we are and what the teaching we're doing relating to relationships, this was uh, captivating to me and I feel felt most fitting for where we are. He says, but he says, I'm reminded, watch this, he says, of your sincere faith. I love that. It's talking about Timothy, who was now a son in the gospel, who was carrying the gospel, who was sharing the gospel, and who was leading in the gospel. And, uh, and he says that Timothy has sincere faith. Watch this. He says, which first lived in your grandmother. I love this. It lived in your grandmother, Lois, and it also then was seen and evident in your mother, Eunice. And then Paul says, and I'm persuaded it now lives in you. What is that? It is that sincere faith in Christ. He said, it started in your grandmother. It was in your mother. He said, and I now see this evident in your life, Timothy. He says, for this reason, he says, I remind you to um, fan into flame, stir up that gifting of God, remember your heritage, remember what's been passed down. Boy, I feel the presence of God. Ooh. He says, remember your heritage, remember what your grandmother had and remember what your mother had and remember what has been passed down to you, Timothy, and remember that I, even now, Paul, laid my hands upon you. So I want you to, and and and, and the context here is that 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 Timothy was was discouraged at some level and navigating through some things. Here is his father in the gospel encouraging him, writing to him, wanting uh, Timothy to stir up the gift, to fan into flames that gift of God that's on the inside of him and uh, began to speak to him that, um, that the Spirit of God uh, uh, gave us, for the Spirit God gave us does not make us timid, Paul says, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. I wanna just camp out for a few moments and encourage all of the mothers. I wanna encourage the mothers, no matter what your scenario is, if you are um, a mother of uh, several children, mother of one child, um, mother uh, with a family, uh, husband and wife, a mother uh, that is a single mother, and, uh, and you're going it, um, you know, which you might consider alone, though God is with you always. Um, uh, maybe you are a widow, whatever the circumstance or the situation you may find yourself in. I want to just quickly speak to you. Um, last week, Last week, while I was teaching on relationships, I asked us to question as a family uh, when we talked about our marriages and singlehood and, and now motherhood or fatherhood, whatever the relationship dynamic might be. I asked us last week, have we um, consulted God? Have we sought God? Have we have we searched for the wisdom and the nuggets of God that is revealed in his word, the truth? Are you still with me? Have we sought God for his insight regarding our relationship or our function or our roles? Are you still with me? I asked us if we had done that, if, if we've been intentional about it, not just kind of, you know, in general, but I mean, very specifically going after God, asking God for his insight in his wisdom to be again downloaded into our hearts so that we can learn to do relationships the way God intended relationships to be lived out. And I think it would be most appropriate to again pose this question to mothers. So to mothers, to mothers, um, again, I want to talk about uh, again, acknowledging God. I want to talk about um, searching out and receiving nuggets from God. This whole idea that that Timothy is a product of his grandmother and his mother, and he ends up with, watch this, sincere faith in Christ. All right. So again, number one, number one, number one, I want mothers, I want mothers to acknowledge the source. Number one, acknowledge the source. Yes, again, we do acknowledge, we recognize the role, the function of motherhood, of mothers 
carrying a child and giving birth to a child. But I want us to make sure that we are encouraging you to acknowledge the source Right. And uh, when you look up motherhood, uh, you do see that it, it speaks of the woman or the mother being the source. I want to just elevate us one. Right. Let's go to Genesis chapter two. Oh, my God. I love the word Genesis chapter two. Then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living person, a living soul, a living being. So number one, out the gate, I want to encourage mothers to acknowledge God as the source, right? God is the source of life. God is the origin of life. He is the genesis. Are you still tracking with me? So out the gate, I want to encourage you from God's perspective, him being the word, being the foundation, the word, the truth of God's word, that we would acknowledge acknowledge the source, encouraging mothers, acknowledge the source. He is the source of life. Are you still tracking with me? Then let's go to that Proverbs, Proverbs chapter three. I want to encourage mothers. I want to encourage mothers everywhere to acknowledge the source. The psalmist says, or, or, or Proverbs says, trust in the Lord, watch this, with all of your heart and do not lean to your own understanding. Are you still tracking with me? He says, in all of your ways, acknowledge him, acknowledge God, and he will direct your path. Yes, again, sometimes we got new mothers that are just coming in, and maybe you're not aware. You've just gone off of what was passed down to you, what you were taught, what you Googled, what you learned in a class. Enough saying those things are all bad. I'm just saying that the source, I want to encourage you, invite you to acknowledge that God is our source. And if you will acknowledge him in every one of your ways, not just in your spiritual life, not just in your prayer life, not just coming to church or seeking God, but in every area of your life, the Bible says that he's going to direct your path. He's going to lead you. He's going to instruct you. So I want to encourage all the mothers I want to encourage the mothers to acknowledge the source. God is our source. And then number two, I want to encourage you to steward the gift or the gifts, right? I want to encourage you to steward the gift or the gifts, depending on how many of you have a child or children. Watch this. Whether you have biologically given birth to these children or you have the function or the role, I want to encourage all mothers to acknowledge the source. And then number two, I want to encourage mothers to steward the gift, acknowledging that the gift, the child or the children are a gift from God. Are you still tracking with me? Psalms 127, the psalmist says, behold, children are a gift of the Lord, the fruit of the womb is a reward. It is a blessing. Children are a gift. So I want to encourage you as we look at the text, as we look at Timothy receiving this uh, inheritance, if you will, from his grandmother and from his mother, they reared him and raised him and brought him up to the place where he landed. Oh my God. He landed with sincere faith in Christ. What are some of those dynamics? I believe they had an understanding that God was the source. He was the source of life and that God had used Timothy's mother to birth him in the earth. Are you still tracking with me? And yet they recognized again that he was a gift and we must steward the gift. I want to encourage mothers to steward the gift. How do we do this? Number one, I want to encourage mothers everywhere. Please jot it down. Pay attention. Yes, my God, pay attention, pay attention to what's happening with your children, pay attention to what's going on in them and what's going on around them. I want to encourage mothers to be present. It may seem like it's just um, automatic or an eight. I just think it's important in this season, at this time, in this generation, in this culture, that we address it, that we encourage it, that we bring awareness to it, that mothers would, again, be present, that you would pay attention and that you would be present with your children. I want to encourage mothers everywhere. You know this is a part of the role and the function to nurture to nurture, get uh, mothers back into the place of nurturing, encouraging it and, and making and bringing an awareness that you would nurture your children, that you would develop them. 
Are you still tracking with me that your role and function would be there to be the nurturer, to, to nurture, to come alongside, to stand with, to, to, to develop them, to invest in them? Are you still tracking with me? I want to I encourage mothers to nurture the heart of your children. Oh my, nurture the character of your children. Mm. The ultimate goal, are you still tracking with me as Christ followers, the role and function of motherhood is that you are nurturing children, that you are investing in them, that you are, that you are developing them, you're de developing their heart, you're developing, listen, not just material, not just natural, but that you're doing internal work. You are doing surgical work internal on the inner being of the children. Are you still tracking with me? You're that nurturer. You're that supporter. You're that encourager. You're that lifter. You're helping to shape who they are and shaping their esteem and shaping their identity. Are you tracking with me? And you keep placing it back and drawing it back to who they are in Christ. You are helping to shape character and shape their heart and shape their heart so that it is being bent toward the creator, toward the source, toward God. Oh, what a role, what a function. Oh my God, as you are acknowledging that God is your source, you are desiring to walk in step with him, to walk according to the word. You are connected to the source. You are praying and walking with the source. You are studying the source through the word of God. And then you have the privilege and the opportunity to pass that on, to nurture that and release that into your children. Are you still tracking with me to help develop them and, and strengthen them and build them up in their relationship with God. Other areas, absolutely, physically and socially and, 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 and emotionally, are you still tracking with me? But, but that source and that foundation is that you're that one that is praying over them, that, that is shaping their heart toward the things of God. Oh, and then that final part, I want to make sure I drive home. Mothers, if you would, protect your children. Oh my God, are you still tracking with me? Protect them. Oh, I don't just mean physically. Hopefully there are fathers and men around, but I want to encourage you to protect them and to protect their environment, protect what's coming into their uh, eye gate and their ear gate and what sets in their heart. Are you still tracking with me? Pray some things up and pray some things out and pray some things away. Protect them. Be careful where you leave your children. Be careful who you allow to pour into your children. Be careful who you allow to watch your children and keep your children and where your children lay their heads at at night. Oh my God, I feel them. Are you still tracking with me? I want to encourage mothers to steward the gift. It's not for us to just do what we want to and when we want to and how we want to with who we want to and who we want in and out. You need to walk. Mothers, mothers, rise up and move in discernment. In other words, you have this intuition, this flow that's going on on the inside of you that says, oh, ah, ah, some of you that are new coming in, I wanted to just give that to you. You, you have this, this, this inner flow that's, ah, I don't know about that. Just flow with it and follow it. Be careful who you allow to influence your children. And then number three, I, I want you to, again, acknowledge. Number two, acknowledging, stewarding the gift of children. And then I want to encourage mothers everywhere to think generations, to think generationally. Are you still tracking with me? Please jot it down. Yeah, number one, acknowledge God as the source. Steward the gifts that God gives to you. They're not yours to keep forever. They're not yours to do what you want. You want to acknowledge him and you want to, you want to, you want to direct those children. You want to create an environment for those children. You want, to, you want to protect their environment. You want to invest in them the word of God. You want to invest in them through prayer. You want to invest in them through modeling the heart of God. You want to invest in them through raising up godly children. Are you still listening to me? The greatest gift that you can give give is to be able to serve and flow and help shape the heart and mind of another human being. Oh my God, are you still tracking with me? I want to encourage you to do that. And I want you to be thinking generations, think generationally. Don't just think about the child or the children, the one, the two that you have, but you must see them and then see their children and then their children's children. Are you still tracking with me? You're never just shaping one person. You're never just shaping your family. You're never just shaping the two or three or however many children you have, but you're shaping generational generationally. Are you listening to me? You're shaping generations. You're shaping your children, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren. Are you listening to me? And the offsprings. So we must be intentional when God releases that gift into your hand. You take it seriously. You take it with a sober mind. It's not just flipping and however it happens and however it turns out, but you want to be intentional. You want to walk in step with God. I want to encourage mothers. 
woo, to think generations and to think generationally. Proverbs chapter seven, he says, my son, keep my words and treasure my commandments within you. He says, keep my commandments and live in my teachings as the apple of your eye. Bind them around your finger. That's part of the role and function of mothers coming in. Help bind that word around their fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Oh, my God. Let God use you as an instrument to begin to write the word of God on the heart of your children. Then Psalm 78 says, we will not hide them from their descendants. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, his power and the wonders he has done. Uh, oh my God, as mothers, speak it and rehearse it. Talk about the goodness of God. Talk about how God has brought you through. Talk about how God has brought you over. Talk about how great and wonderful and magnificent the God in whom you serve. Share it. Oh my God, don't be ashamed as God brings you through. Share it with your children invested in their lives. And then Psalms 145 says again, one generation will praise your works to another and will declare the mighty acts of God. That's what we're believing God for. I just wanted to come on. I wanted to encourage and celebrate mothers. And I wanted to give you just a few nuggets, some things that can encourage you as you navigate this relationship, as you navigate the relationship of motherhood with your children and some of you with your grandchildren, uh, or again, you're a surrogate mother, whatever it is, a spiritual mother, you just mothering people in the neighborhood, whatever function and role you have, we bless you, we encourage you, we lift you, we celebrate you, and we charge you to be everything that God's called you to be so that you can not only impact those who you physically see now, oh my God, but begin to see generations in the spirit that you are uh, shepherding them, that you are guarding them, that you are protecting them, that you are investing in them, making a difference not only to the one you see now, but generations to come. I want to encourage you. Would you just begin to honor God right there where you are? We're getting ready to pray. And I also want to encourage mothers everywhere yeah, just like I'm asking you to acknowledge the source, I want to encourage you to trust the source. Are you still tracking with me? I know it's not a bed of ease. I know that it's not a bed of roses. I know that it's not always wonderful. I know that it's not always pretty. It's not always exciting. It's not always celebration, right? Yeah, there's some rough days. There's some tough days. There's some challenging days. There's some doubting days. I pray that God, the spirit of the Lord would encourage you, would lift you to trust the source. The one who started is going to finish it. Are you listening to me? Our role, the function of the mother is to raise them up, train them, right? Then you release them and trust God. Trust the seed that you planted, that it's going to grow. No matter if it zigzags and goes different ways, we trust God for a full return. Would you be encouraged? Would you be lifted in your heart, lifted in your mind, lifted in your spirit? Oh my God, I know we're celebrating mothers right now. And for some of you, you're in, you're in full celebration mode. Others of you, your hearts may be broken. You may be challenged. You may even be discouraged. Spirit of the living God lift you and touch you right now in your heart, in your mind. Those of you that are grieving, may the spirit of God comfort you right now, strengthen you, build you up. Oh my God, may you be celebrated. May you be encouraged and lifted and supported in this moment. God, we give you the praise and we give you the honor. We thank you for godly mothers. Thank you for your truth and your word that gives instructions, gives a blueprint, gives uh, wisdom for mothers in raising children. We are so grateful and we're so appreciative of your truth and of your word. And we're grateful for how you're using women, how you're using mothers. We bless you and we honor you. May they acknowledge you as the source. May they be intentional. Lord, to steward the gift of their children, the gifts, they are gifts to them. Children are a gift from you. May they steward it properly, intentionally. And I pray that every mother will think generationally and learn to trust you. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Listen, my friend, maybe you're viewing and just happen to stumble across because of the holiday or Mother's Day celebration. I want you to know that God loves you. I want you to know that God loves you and that God desires to have a relationship with you. If I'm speaking to you, I want me to, you to do me a favor. I want you to just indicate it right there in the chat room or the comments. Say, that's me, brother. I want to know God. Somebody's going to respond to you. We'll walk with you. We'll pray with you. We'll navigate with you. There are others of you right now on this wonderful weekend. You're saying, man, I need to come back. Even some of you that are challenged, some of you have challenges during this weekend. Maybe you have a strained relationship with your mom or, or you with your children. Whatever the circumstance may be, I believe you're hearing and sensing in your heart 
the tugging of God right now, that wooing of the spirit, not forcing, but just that gentle touch of God with his arms stretched out, God ready to receive you, restore you, encourage you, and lift you. If that's you, just indicate in the chat room in the comments, we wanna pray with you. There are others of you this weekend that are saying, man, I need a place to land. I need a place to call home. I need a place where I can connect. If you'd like more information about TCI, do us a favor, just indicate it right there in the chat room in the comments or reach out to us. We'd love to connect with you and, allow, and, and, and partner together in advancing the kingdom of God. Would love for you to be a part of this family. Listen to all of our partners, to our friends. Thank you for being with us this weekend. To all the mothers, I want you to celebrate big children, spouses. Come on, just, just put it on them. Let this be a wonderful time of celebration. I pray that some words have been spoken, nuggets have been released, wisdom of God has been released in your life as we continue to develop relationships that reflect the word of God, the heart of God. I wanna remind all of you that the king is up to good concerning us. No matter what we're facing, no matter what's going on, the best is still yet to come. Listen, my friends, I can't wait to see you next week.
Oh. 